Hi, if this is your first time here, I'm Dave and this is my own devices. I make videos about home audio and music. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up. And if this kind of channel interests you, please seriously consider subscribing. Thanks. Hi, it's me again. Uh, you know, I regularly peruse uh, websites like Craigslist, eBay, Goodwill, and Facebook Marketplace, you know, looking for deals on home audio gear. And I've had some real success in the past snagging some real gems at bargain prices, but, you know, not everything works out. And, but my percentage is pretty good, and that's what keeps me going and motivated. Um, I know a lot of guys out there hit their local garage, yard, and estate sales and had some tremendous success, but I've tried it and it's not really for me. It's too much time and effort searching for good stuff among mountains of trash. I suppose that bang for buck would be considered my general philosophy when I look for gear. And, you know, last week I scored a couple of items and first was this Technics SL23 turntable. And now at $100, it was not the bargain per se, but the seller was getting a lot of interest on it and I was the first person to show up with cash in hand. And it's in terrific shape and it came with an excellent Sure cartridge. However, the main reason I bought it was because I actually owned one of these in high school and college. So it was largely a, like a sentimental purchase which I've never really done much of before. Uh, it was considered more of a budget model back then and because the direct drive models were the pricier ones that everybody wanted. But I wasn't able to stretch my budget back then, so I had to get this one. The belt drive on this is great, and the semi-automatic feature is something I appreciate. The SL23 is extremely reliable and is considered an underappreciated classic from the mid-1970s. Now next was something that was a bit different for me. I spotted this one, a $25 Sony receiver, and I think, hmm, $25, it's an excellent price for a piece of functioning electronics, and at first I thought it was one of those, you know, AV receivers that have been posted, that get posted like hundreds of them every week, and they're totally obsolete, and, you know, I'm not interested in one of those, but no, it was a relatively new remote control, two-channel Sony receiver unused with original box and all the accessories and well after a bit of back and forth with the seller when first she told me somebody else was coming to get it and then they didn't turn up and she says I can have it so I got my 25 bucks I'm gonna go down there and get it right now Pleasant transaction, people were very nice. Met them in the Lowe's parking lot. Let's check it out. Well, here we are. Got it out of the box. It's got a little bit of this padded paper. Oh, it's around backwards. Let's turn it around. Oh, it's heavy on the one side. And not so heavy on the other. All right. Looks pretty good. Kind of a budget unit from Sony. Uh, simple black, modern look. Let's uh, hook it up, see how it sounds. Before I hook it up, I'm curious to see what's going on under the hood. And looking inside, the power transformer is actually quite substantial, uh, going by its weight, I felt earlier. And it appears to have four discrete power transistors and a large heat sink. As you can see, it's fairly sparse inside with three circuit boards and a couple of Sony branded 6800 microfarad capacitors uh, obviously not top of the line but it gives me some hope for halfway decent fidelity so here we are basic black with a simple design you know two knobs an input select and a volume simple led display and a row of buttons underneath it's a standard 19 inch width and fairly compact size it's not very deep Around the back, there's the capacity to connect up to five devices and a little mini jack for, your, for a phone or an iPod, I guess. Cost cutting is clearly evident in the choice of spring clip speaker terminals, and that's a bit disappointing. 
Also disappointing, there is no phono input. I like the remote and it has plenty of functionality, very Sony-like. In my small listening room here, I have just a few sets of speakers. Uh, I'm going to hook up a pair of 20-year-old Klipsch KG 3.5 floor standards, which I really like a lot. And they're lively and always sound good, no matter what I connect to them. I also have a pair of Kef, you know, Q150 bookshelf style boxes. And they're just a little bit more finicky about the amplification they received, as they like a bit of power. But I'm a big fan of their UniQ drivers and excellent sound quality. I'm going to connect my first generation iPad Pro using an AudioQuest Dragonfly Black DAC with a jitterbug. While listening to a variety of tracks with the Sony, I determined that it appears to have been designed with kind of a V-shaped sound signature, which results in boosted high and low frequencies. The treble is noticeably bright and detailed, fairly smooth, but has a bit of an edge on female vocals, for example. Now the bass is deep and powerful. This unit doesn't have a loudness button, but it sounds like it's on all the time. I found songs like Music is the Drug by Bass Nectar be quite exhilarating to listen to. The Kefs really showed their stuff. These small boxes sounded like they had a sub connected. It was really something. I got similar results with the clip speakers as they sounded really good as well. But the bass wasn't as impressive sounding as on the Q150s and that's a bit surprising considering how much larger they are. You know for such a cheap unit, the Sony didn't embarrass itself. It's, it's not audiophile quality sound, but it's a mainstream product for non-audiophile customers, and I can see why its reviews are so positive. It has a crowd-pleasing sound, and you hook it up to your speakers, and it will, they will sizzle and boom. And how nice would it be for long periods of extended listening? I don't know, maybe not so great, but it's pretty good. And you know, after all this, I'm wondering, I wonder how this Sony would compare to maybe a, a classic old receiver from the past. And you know what? I happen to have one right here in my house. So let's compare it to this old Marantz, shall we? The legendary Marantz 2270 is from 1973 and at the time, it was their top of the line model. This is a substantial unit that is much heavier and larger than the Sony, and it sold for about $600 new, and it's a real, a real nice one could fetch double that or better right now. The 70 watts per channel was pretty generous in its day, and you know, four or five years later was the start of the receiver wars. And if you're not familiar with the receiver wars, I'll I made a video about it and I'll post a link about to that below. Wow, this is much different. Gone are the extended high frequencies and boomy bass. This is much more even handed and pleasurable listening. The lovely and natural mid range is what really stands out here in comparison. Highs and lows are excellent, but not exaggerated. This is made for long-term listening enjoyment. Additionally, in the looks department, there is no contest. I did kind of miss the convenience of the remote control though. And as cool as the Marantz radio tuning dial is, I do recall getting very excited when digital radios with station memory buttons came out in the early 80s. So in conclusion, I wanted to see if a budget modern component could compete at any level with a 40 or 50 year old deluxe model. And to my ears, clearly the Marantz is noticeably more pleasing, has a better tone, and is obviously much highly, is a very highly revered uh, model among vintage audio enthusiasts. You know, they have a superb look and build quality. And they, but they do require some upkeep and maintenance, kind of like a vintage 1970s automobile. You know, the parts are aging, they're wearing out and needing replacement or a good restoration. But 
they're actually considered good investments now and they hold or increase with value over time. The Sony has a few good things going for it. It's a bargain price, has functionality, it's conven has convenience, and it has a pretty good crowd-pleasing sound quality to it. And I was surprised by just how good it sounds. If you come across one like it for like $50 or $75, and I'm looking for a receiver for your kid, a bedroom, your den, basement, garage, or a workshop, grab it. It's really not bad at all.